Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, what is ahead for Hunter Biden now that his plea deal has fallen apart? We're going to explore if his activities could tie into a possible impeachment of his father. Battle over the border. Congressional Republicans blasting Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for the crisis at the border, including America's massive problems with fentanyl, which they say is the result of an open border. Transgender bathroom controversy, how one Virginia school district is, bu is buying gender-neutral bathrooms for two high schools, and why one area teacher says parents should be worried, and how Korean Christians are praying for God to reunite the North and South. We're going to tell you about a unique conference to help make this dream a reality. All those stories and more ahead today in CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. And we want to begin this half hour with the uncertain outlook for Hunter Biden after the unraveling of what Republicans called a sweetheart deal for the president's son. Now, a five-year federal investigation into Biden's activities is back on hold after a judge raised concerns about the terms of the plea deal brokered by federal prosecutors. Those concerns have raised new questions about whether Biden is receiving preferential treatment from the Justice Department. CBN's Brody Carter has this story. Hunter Biden seen leaving this Delaware federal court Wednesday after pleading not guilty to two tax charges after his plea deal fell apart. That deal, which would have allowed him to plead guilty to two tax misdemeanors, as well as avoid a felony gun charge, had been criticized by Republicans as an example of a two-tiered justice system. Hunter Biden is getting a sweetheart deal that no other American who wasn't rich and had a father as the president would ever get. In the courtroom, the judge asked if the deal offered Hunter Biden blanket immunity on future prosecution. When the prosecutor responded no, the defense attorneys declared the agreement null and void. Although the attorneys reached a new agreement, the judge still found fault with other aspects of the deal and told them to come back in 30 days. Chief political analyst David Brody told CBN's Faith Nation that critics see the courtroom revelation as part of a pattern of preferential treatment. And now we have this, that there was ready to be a plea bargain, and now we find out, wait a minute, they were tucking something else in this deal. This is why people are frustrated and have lost faith in public institutions. This week, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy reportedly discussing with fellow Republicans an impeachment query into President Joe Biden related to the investigation into Hunter. A House inquiry would be the first step in bringing forth articles of impeachment. With each passing day, House Republicans' investigations uncover more and more evidence showing that Joe Biden not only knew about, but was involved in his family's illegal influence peddling scheme and the cover-up from the weaponized Department of Justice. Prosecutors did confirm that there is an ongoing investigation into Hunter Biden, and he could face future charges for his foreign lobbying activities. Brody Carter, CBN News. We continue now in Washington where Republicans are taking aim at the top Biden administration official in charge of the border. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas testified before the House Judiciary Committee Wednesday, facing tough questions over his handling of the southern border and the U.S. fentanyl crisis. Democrats accused their Republican colleagues of parroting the MAGA, the MAGA agenda and using the oversight hearing to lay the groundwork for impeachment proceedings against Mayorkas. CBN National Security Correspondent Caitlin Burke is on this story. Mayorkas pushed back against criticism from Republicans, instead touting the success of his department and challenging lawmakers to work with DHS to keep Americans safe. Our approach to managing the borders securely and humanely, even within our fundamentally broken immigration system, is working. The data does show a lull after years of increased numbers at the border, but Republicans maintain the Biden administration's border policies have been a disaster. From fiscal year 2014 to the beginning of the Biden administration, there were only four months with an apprehension number higher than 100,000. But under the Biden administration, there have now been 29 straight months. Lawmakers pointed to the U.S. fentanyl crisis as one of many serious consequences to what they call an open border. According to the CDC, over 150 people are dying every day because of synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Secretary Marcus, it is your responsibility to secure our border against fentanyl trafficking. The fentanyl killing thousands of Americans every year is a direct result of your dereliction. Since we've been sitting here since 10 a.m., that's the number of drug overdoses due to fentanyl in the country. 
Mayorkas agreed fentanyl is a serious problem, but pointed out that it's not a new challenge. It's been escalating for more than five years. This is a scourge that all of us have to work together to combat. And we in the Department of Homeland Security, with our federal partners, are taking it to the traffickers to an unprecedented degree through innovative operations targeting criminals. Congressman Jerry Nadler, the committee's ranking member, accuses Republicans of using the hearings as a basis to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. Republicans have not established any legitimate grounds to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. They have policy disagreements with the secretary, and so do we. But policy disagreements and personal grudges are not a basis for impeachment. Democrats warned the rhetoric coming from their Republican colleagues is dangerous and has led to violence in the past. When elected officials repeat great replacement rhetoric, including the language of invasion, are they putting a target on the backs of immigrants and people of color? It certainly fuels um, uh, the threat landscape. Today's hearing comes just after a federal court ruled against a new Biden asylum policy, one the administration has called crucial to its efforts to curb illegal border crossings. The Justice Department has already promised to appeal. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Senator Mitch McConnell is downplaying worries about his health after a scary moment Wednesday when he simply stopped talking during a news conference. This week has been good bipartisan cooperation. The 81-year-old McConnell was eventually led away from the podium by his colleagues before returning minutes later to say he was doing fine. Dr. Leah Kroll, a neurologist who has not treated McConnell, telling ABC News his concussion four months ago could be related to his problem yesterday. So we think about things like low blood pressure, dehydration, medication side effects, but we also worry about seizure, TIA, which stands for transient ischemic attack, that's a mini stroke, um, or even a minor stroke. Those are some of the conditions we would consider. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy meeting with him afterwards saying there weren't any concerns about his health. Also in Washington Wednesday, testimony about unidentified aerial phenomena known as UAPs, what people used to call UFOs. House lawmakers heard from three whistleblowers who shared their firsthand experiences with UAP and how the government handled those reports. One witness saying these sightings are widespread. UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. These sightings are not rare or isolated, they are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. The stigma attached to UAP is real and powerful and challenges national security. The goal of the hearing is to continue building momentum for greater transparency about the strange encounters documented by hundreds of pilots. Coming up, what the next school with the next school year coming, already the issue of transgender bathrooms is causing controversy. As one high school is buying gender neutral bathrooms in two schools this fall. And we're going to hear from one teacher who says parents should be concerned. We've got the story for you when we come back. Your news channel, your shows, the stories you care about. Anytime you want, anywhere you want. Download the CBN News app today. So what can you buy with $11 million? In Loudoun County, Virginia, it is buying gender neutral bathrooms in two high schools this fall. So sex specific bathrooms will be a thing of the past for some high schoolers in Loudoun County. Appearing on this week's episode of The Global Lane, Young Voices commentator and Loudoun County school teacher Juliana Sweeney says parents should be alarmed. This is not only an expensive problem at $11 million, but this is also a problem of privacy and the principle in and of itself. So let's talk a little bit about the price. So Loudoun County is known for being a wealthy county for sure, but there are only two bathroom facilities that are being renovated. Uh, there are about 16 high schools, not to mention the dozens 
of middle schools and elementary schools that would also be renovated if they follow through with the pilot program. Uh, and so this would be a multi-million dollar project across the county. And then second and most importantly, uh, two most importantly things is first the privacy issue. So the bathrooms are a floor to ceiling stall instead of partition stalls. Uh, and so there is supposedly complete privacy in gender neutral spaces. Now that being said, LCPS and the DC metro area in general already has problems with uh, drug abuse and sexual abuse occurring in bathrooms. And so there is a concern with this supposed privacy that the problems would be exasperated. And then finally is the principle in and of itself. We continue to get rid of women's spaces at the expense of their safety. Uh, in some cases, there are 13 and 14-year-old girls who would be sharing bathrooms with 18, 19, and perhaps even 20-year-old men. And so this is at a steep cost, not only the price, but also for the student's safety. How about gyms and locker rooms, Juliana? The same policy there? Yeah, it looks like the, the high schools are also eventually going to implement the same policies with the locker rooms. That being said, we do have a great governor in Virginia who is looking out for parental rights and also the privacy rights for girls. But I do worry that the policies will continue to be implemented in the locker rooms and other spaces as well. And, and I must remind our viewers, this is the school district that was accused of covering up the sexual assault of two girls by the same male student at two separate Loudoun County high schools. And the father of one of those victims was arrested for disorderly conduct at a county school board meeting. Remember that one. So, Juliana, didn't the school district want to make a fresh start? They have hired the former superintendent of schools here in Virginia Beach, Dr. Aaron Spence, and he's starting his new job as superintendent of Loudoun County Schools next month. So what difference do you expect he'll make on this? You know, it's hard to say because the head of schools have not spoken out on this issue. They've just continued to say we are going to follow through with this policy, uh, even though parents are speaking out against the bathroom policies and the construction of the high schools. But we're not sure what it's going to look like after this school year. So the pilot program is being constructed in those two high schools, as you mentioned, and will open, it looks like, in the fall or the winter. And the county continues to say that they're going to follow through with their plans. So it's full steam ahead. So what should be done then? Might more parents risk being labeled terrorists for expressing their concerns at school board meetings? I do think that's part of it. The parents need to be willing to go to the school board meetings to meet with the governor, to meet with teachers and administrators and make their voices known. But even more than that, I'm advocating for parents to consider alternatives, to consider Christian schools. Um, there's a brand new Christian school opening up in Loudoun County this year. That's K-8. And so these options continue to open up to be the alternative to the public school system. And as we take students out of the public schools, hopefully they will be trained under the values of Christian schools and they will be kept safe in a way that is just not possible in the public schools. I think mo most uh, parents would just say have a separate bathroom for transgender students. If you have that many in the school, just have one for them. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And the funny thing is, is they already have separate spaces for transgender students, but that has also come at the expense of staff and teachers not having their own separate bathrooms or not as many separate bathrooms. Um, and so it seems that they are kneeling to the transgender students, the minority, at least for now, a small minority, um, again, at the expense of student safety. Okay, we'll see where all this leads. Loudoun County School, Virginia school teacher, Young Voices commentator, Juliana Sweeney. Thank you, Juliana, for sharing your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you. Also this week on the Global Lane, the counteroffensive is underway in Ukraine, but why is no one talking peace? And losing a loved one and learning to grieve well. You can watch the Global Lane this evening on the CBN News Channel. It begins at 8.30 Eastern. You can also see it on the CBN News app or watch on YouTube. Still ahead, Korean Christians crying out to God to reunite their nation. We're going to tell you about a special prayer event to fulfill this dream. We've got the story for you. It's all coming up right after this.
North and South Korea are two very different nations divided at the end of the war in 1953. Koreans have cried out to God to bring their people back together. As Chris Mitchell now reports from South Korea, one church is planning a unique conference to see this dream come true. We came to this prayer house in the countryside to talk to a pastor who has a vision to bring Koreans, Israelis, and the nations together to pray for the reunification of Korea. Bringing together Jews and Gentiles to pray for North and South Korea to once again be one country is the goal of Zion Conference 23, reunification of Korea through the Holy Spirit. Pastor Jang leads the Songdo Yusarang Church. He believes that blessing Israel and bringing Jews and Gentiles together in repentance and prayer can be the first step in a journey to seeing the two nations come back together as one. The Jews and us, we have shared spiritual things. We thought that we should serve the people of Israel well in Korea, so we decided to invite them here and hold the Zion Conference in Korea. This is the first reason for the Zion Conference. Pastor Jang says prayer and turning from sin as a nation and individually is vital. To achieve the reunification of the two nations on the Korean Peninsula, it is necessary for the Korean people to first repent of their sins and the sins of the nation. I believe that when people of all ages, from children to the elderly, repent of their sins and the national idolatry and worship the Lord, a shift will occur. Pastor Jang sees the 70th anniversary of the 1953 armistice that ended the fighting between the two nations as a significant milestone and a biblical jubilee year for freedom and restoration. He expects the fulfillment of Matthew 4.16. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. When the fighting stopped, North and South Korea took different paths. Under liberal democracy, South Korea developed into one of the most prosperous countries on earth. Under one of the worst dictatorships in history, North Korea became a totalitarian regime. This nighttime satellite image from space shows the startling difference between the two countries, with the South flooded with bright lights and the North nearly completely swallowed up in darkness. It's why many North Korean defectors like Yeon Hee Shin want the world to know what's happening in her country. I want the world to know that because of one dictatorship, the whole country, the whole people in North Korea is suffering. Their human rights are violated and all of the people are being treated like animals. We can't even say a word, even though God gave us a mouth to speak. And we can only live on 10 percent of our labor and 90 percent the government takes away. The conference will bring the nations together in front of Seoul's City Hall. Over 100 organizations are coming together to pray and plan. We invited intercessors from over 30 countries to pray for the reunification of South Korea and North Korea. And we invited Israelis to a 10-day conference free of charge. The church, including its children, is getting ready to host representatives from Israel and the nations. I am praying and singing praises for the Zion Convention. I am wholeheartedly praising with this ukulele. I want presidents and pastors from all over the world to come to this Zion Convention. We pray for the unity of North and South Korea by the Holy Spirit. And I look forward to and dream of the day when Jew and Gentile will be one. God has chosen Korea to be a nation that prepares the way for Jesus' return in the end times, a nation used for the restoration of Israel. It is my hope that through the Zion Convention, Korea will be united and prepared as a nation to prepare the way for Jesus' return and that it will be used for the restoration of Israel. I am preparing prayers and heart music for the Zion Convention. I hope that through the Zion Convention, North and South Korea can praise as one. I would really appreciate it if people from other nations would pray and bless my country. Pastor Jang says many political efforts have failed to bring the two nations together. He believes the division transcends political solutions, and the key is the anointing of the Holy Spirit to bring down spiritual strongholds. We've come to realize that prayer is the only way to combat these spiritual battles and darkness that bind the Korean Peninsula. 
Because the evil spirit of Satan is holding the Korean Peninsula, there is no other way to unify it. Only when the prayers of God's children ascend to His throne will the entire spiritual system of division holding the Korean Peninsula crumble, and the two nations will become one in the Holy Spirit. All chains will be broken in His presence. Unification will be accomplished by the hand of God and through the children of God. If Pastor Jang's vision comes to pass and the prayers of the saints answered, North Korea will be free, and North and South will be one. Chris Mitchell, Seoul, South Korea. We have an encouraging word for you and your day ahead when we come back. Stay with us. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN. The Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. Administering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place, all day, every day. The CBN News Channel. Download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. CBN News. Welcome back. Time now for your Thursday. Thankful. I trust you will join me in this prayer of gratitude. It simply says this, Lord, you are good. You've been so good, even better than good. You've been so good to me. I can't praise you enough. You've been so good to me. Thank you, Todd Galberth, for those incredible lyrics. They are our prayer of gratitude on this faithful Thursday. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN News. Watch, I want to remind you, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online. That is CBNNews.com. We would love to know what you think about the stories you've seen today or any day. You can do so by emailing us. The address is newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would love to hear from you. I encourage you to make this a Thursday filled with thankfulness and join us right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.